What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's Chu here from Choose to Explore where I teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So I just spent eight days in the beautiful islands of French Polynesia. And this destination was like no other place I've ever been. Definitely the most beautiful water and beaches I have ever seen. But when you think about Bora Bora, you think about luxury vacations, you think about over water bungalows, you think about great seafood, you don't think about budget destinations. But in our eight days, we actually spent significantly less than what we budgeted for. So I decided to make this video to give you guys 19 ways that you can save and make your dream trip come true. So stay tuned. If you want to go to Bora Bora and you think you're poor or poor, you don't want to miss this one. Typically to get to French Polynesia, your biggest expense is going to be your flight. So my wife and I are based in New York. And flights from New York, even though it is a hub, were so expensive. The flights that I found a little more affordable had crazy layovers in a lot of different places. But what I found was, is if you take a positioning flight from wherever you are to the West Coast, being Los Angeles, San Francisco, or Seattle, you can save significantly on your flight price. Not only that, but those three airports typically have a direct flight to Tahiti. So my wife and I actually flew from San Francisco to Tahiti with a low-cost carrier called French Bee. We actually got our flight for under $300, but thanks to a Capital One travel credit, we got our flight for under $100 per person. Commonly, I see San Francisco to Tahiti for around $700 for the one way. So getting our tickets so cheap definitely helps save our trip significantly. We actually made an entire video on our experience with French B. So if you guys want to see that or have any reservations, please be sure to look in our description on that as well. So one of the main ways that I saved on this trip was by planning early and by getting travel credit cards. To talk about it briefly, we used one card for airfare, where we just paid taxes and fees on our return trip. And we used another card, the Hilton Aspire, and that's what we used for free stays at Conrad Bora Bora, as well as Hilton Hotel Tahiti. And these are amazing, amazing properties. So using this card, we got upgraded in Tahiti to a suite with a kitchen and two balconies. And look at this beautiful bathroom as well. To the bedroom. Voila, beautiful. And then at Conrad Bora Bora, we got upgraded to an overwater bungalow with a plunge pool, access to a private beach, a $250 resort credit that offset our bill to $0 at the end of our stay. So because of the $250 resort credit, we got three dinners in Bora Bora for free. Using the free night rewards and our points for my wife and I, we got six free nights, three in Conrad Bora Bora, and three in Hilton Hotel Tahiti. We got free lounge access and so much more. So if this is an option, I highly recommend doing that and check the link in the description for our referral link. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is maybe a controversial one, but it's to skip Bora Bora period. I'm not going to lie, Bora Bora was my favorite experience here in French Polynesia, but you can get similar experiences in other islands in French Polynesia for a fraction of the price. Also, to get to Bora Bora, it's an additional flight that you need to get to from Tahiti, and that flight typically can be somewhere around $200 to $300 per person, so not really the most budget friendly. And also, to get to some of those luxurious resorts in Bora Bora, a lot of those islands have mandatory transfer fees where you have to pay to get to those islands and you can't swim across them. <laughs> so if you want to stay in one of those luxurious resorts in Bora Bora, you're going to have to buy a flight from Tahiti to then go to Bora Bora. And then from Bora Bora, you have to pay for another ferry or transfer to get from the airport to the islands such as the one that we went to in Conrad Bora Bora or the St. Regis, Le Meridian and all of those as well. Now that airport transfer fee was $150 per person round trip. Factor that in with the airplane cost and it's super expensive just to even get to the island. Honestly, another really good and affordable alternative is to go to the island of Morea. Morea is also another beautiful island in French Polynesia that has those picturesque overwater bungalows as well. But the main benefit of Morea is it's a lot simpler to get there from Tahiti and it's a lot cheaper as well. So the ferry round trip for us was under $25 per person. And like I said, you don't need to take a flight. You can literally just take the ferry and you're there in 30 minutes. Also the island of Morea has similar sea life and marine life where you can see the sharks, you can see the stingrays, and you can swim with them as well. Also the island of Morea has a lot more budget friendly accommodations. 
The next thing that I recommend if you insist on going to Bora Bora is instead of taking a flight, is to take the ferry. Now the ferry is a lot longer. It typically takes like eight hours versus under an hour on the flight, but the price is about half the cost. So if you do have more time than you have money, this is a way to go. Just be aware that the ferry does not run every day and it only runs certain times, but if you time it appropriately, you can save a lot of money this way. Now I know I just gave you the idea to skip Bora Bora, but I know for you guys, Bora Bora may be the reason why you want to go to French Polynesia in the first place. So I'm going to give you guys another way that you can make it happen for a significantly cheaper price. So I learned from many people who are staying in the Hilton that Costco Travel has their own Bora Bora packages that give you flights, hotels, and many other amenities included for a fraction of the cost. Especially if you're staying on your honeymoon, you get even more amenities. We stayed at the Conrad Bora Bora. And I know the cash price per night at an overwater bungalow is around $2,000 per night. But Costco has a deal where you can stay five nights with a deluxe overwater bungalow with free breakfast and flights from Los Angeles included for under $5,000 per person. Now, while that is expensive, it is significantly cheaper than what you would pay a la carte. Now, if this is still too much, they have packages from Mai Tai Bora Bora, which is a three-star resort with an overwater bungalow, complimentary breakfast, and flights included from Los Angeles for under $2,500 per person. So it's definitely much cheaper than doing it a la carte. As I said earlier, getting to Bora Bora is an additional cost. Majority of people fly with Air Tahiti. For a long time, Air Tahiti had French Polynesia monopolized. But recently, Air Moana launched flights around French Polynesia and you guys know, with more competition, is less prices. At the time of our booking, Air Moana tickets were actually cheaper than Air Tahiti. So if you want to opt out of taking the ferry, flying with Air Moana will save you a little bit of money than flying with Air Tahiti. My next tip is don't skip the island of Tahiti. I know a lot of people go to Tahiti just for a transit area, to go to Morea or to go to Bora Bora, but Tahiti is a gem in itself. The island of Tahiti is the biggest island. And it's the only island that really has a city. But while we were there, we rented a car and we explored the entire island and saw so much of the beauty from the black sand beaches, the mountains, the waterfalls, the lighthouses, and so much luscious greenery. But my next point of why Tahiti is fantastic is Tahiti has a lot of budget friendly accommodations. So if you are looking to get a more inexpensive property, Tahiti is your way to go. You can find hostels, you can find Airbnbs, you can find shared houses. All of that, you have a lot more options in the island of Tahiti. My next tip is a really important tip. So because a lot of the tourists are American and French, they will take the US dollar and the Euro. However, please don't do that. You are not getting a good rate when you do that. So a lot of times the vendors will equate 100 XPF to one US dollar. But in actuality, at the time that I'm recording this video, it's like $111 is one US dollar. You're actually losing around 10% of your money and giving your money away is not how you see the world and save a dollar. So for example, if you wanna go to the marsh and you wanna buy some jewelry for around $100, they'll tell you it's either 10,000 XPF or 100 US dollars. But if you use 10,000 XPF, in actuality, that's only like 89 or 90 US dollars. So you're saving almost $10 by paying with XPF versus the US dollar. So during your time in French Polynesia, you want to have local currency. Now my next point is, how do you get that local currency? Now I know a lot of people tend to change money at the money exchanges, and I was prepared to do that. So I found a place in Papillete, but when I went in, they had a fixed fee for exchanging money. I believe it was like $8, and that didn't matter if you were exchanging $5 or $100. It was an $8 fixed fee. Also, their rate wasn't that good either. So I knew that was not the way to go. So instead, I went to the bank and I went to the ATM and I exchanged money because their currency exchange rate is a lot better. The problem is, is that there's going to be foreign transaction fees and the ATM fees. Now, luckily, I used the Charles Schwab Bank and my Charles Schwab Bank has no foreign transaction fees and no ATM fees. Well, they do, but they just reimburse me. 
So I highly recommend opening up a checking account with them because you can get your money out anywhere in the world without paying fees. So the next way that I'm gonna recommend is taking the bus. As you see right behind me, I'm at the airport. That right there is the bus sign. And that right there is the bus station. Rather than taking a taxi for like $30 to drive downtown, or more than $30, we took the public bus and it was 200 franc per person, which is like $2 per person, and it saves us a lot. That right there is seeing the world and save a dollar. Honestly, I didn't find a lot of information online about taking these buses, but there's a lot of different buses and the bus drivers speak English and it was really easy to ask questions and to go in the right direction. So before you get on any buses with any luggage, just be sure to talk to the bus driver beforehand. There also is public transportation in the island of Morea that you can take for a fraction of the cost of these taxis. For more details on public transportation and a lot more, be sure to check out our guide linked in our description. My next point is to get a car rental. So doing a car rental will save you a lot of money if you plan to explore the island at all. And it will give you the flexibility that taking the bus won't give you. Now, there are many different car rental companies, some big brands like we booked with Hertz, but also in that same place there was Europe Car and other local brands as well. Now, the travel credit cards that I talked about earlier will save you a lot of money because my card gives me primary rental car insurance, so I did not have to take their insurance, so that saved me on my daily rate as well. Also, I believe that each rental car company has different prices for the mileage, but with my rental car, it did not include mileage. So I think I paid 40 something dollars for the car rental and then it was like 60 cents per kilometer for every kilometer that I drove when I returned the car. So that is something to be mindful of how much driving you're going to be doing. But still, that'll save you a lot of money versus doing one of the tours where they show you the island as well. The next way that you can save a lot of money is by grocery shopping. Now, when you grocery shop, it's still more expensive than the prices that I'm used to back home. For example, this is a two liter Coca-Cola. $6.20, 620 franc, crazy. But it is a lot cheaper, especially if you have some amenities at your hotel. Also, if you plan to get alcohol, I highly recommend getting alcohol in duty free because it's a lot cheaper. I mean, my wife spent $32 on a cocktail in Bora Bora. So getting it in duty free will save you a lot of money on those alcohol costs. I know you guys remember about those expensive transfer costs from the airport to those luxurious resorts in Bora Bora. Now I'm going to tell you how you guys can save on those transfer fees. So hotels such as Conrad, Bora Bora, St. Regis, Intercontinental are actually not on the main island. So in order to get to the islands, you have to take a boat. We stayed with Conrad Bora Bora and the transfer from the airport was $150 round trip per person. However, by taking the free shuttle from the airport to the main town and then taking the shuttle from the main town to Conrad Bora Bora, we cut our cost in half. So it was about 7,500 XPF versus 15,000 XPF round trip. Also, this is a much better route, especially when you first get there, because when you get off at the ferry dock, you guys can go grocery shopping. And to get to the grocery store, I believe Chin Li is the name, it was less than a five minute walk from the ferry station. The next point that I'm going to talk about is a lot of the luxurious resorts have free ferries to get to the main island. So we stayed at the Conrad Bora Bora, but we also had friends who stayed at the Four Seasons, and both of these resorts had free ferries to get to the main island. And all we had to do was reserve our spot beforehand, because there are limited spaces on the boat. And while you're in the town, I highly recommend to eat in the town. It's significantly cheaper than eating at the restaurant. Plus, my wife was so happy to finally get another pizza. Also at the ferry terminal, they have a marsh. And a marsh in French just means a market. And I personally really like the marsh because you get cheaper souvenirs, pearls, and you can negotiate prices a little bit versus one of the stores, you can't really do that. Now, we stayed in a resort and the food is super expensive. If you're eating at a restaurant, expect to pay around 40 to $50 per meal per person. And that does not even include alcohol. The next way that you can save money in Bora Bora is by getting a hotel that also includes breakfast. So because my wife and I both have diamond status with Hilton, we got free breakfast included with our hotel stay. And that is unlimited breakfast. Honestly, the Conrad Bora Bora and the Hilton Hotel of Tahiti were great. They even gave us to-go containers, so we took a lot of fruit and a lot of snacks, and we really ate a lot of that to-go food in our hotel room. <laughs> So that saved us a lot of money on these food costs. And the food was exquisite there. My next point is about these activities. Now, a lot of these activities are gonna be way more expensive at the resort versus if you get a rental car and do it yourself, 
Or if you go to the town center and in Bora Bora, that's right where the ferry spot is, or in Tahiti, in Papietti, in the city center, a lot of those same tour activities are significantly cheaper through the local vendors versus the big hotel chains. Also, if you have a rental car, you can do a lot of those things free. Now, finding marine life with your own boat may be a little bit of a stretch, but a lot of the waterfalls, a lot of the activities, you can do by yourself. I would even recommend using Viator or Get Your Guide because a lot of those are still significantly cheaper than at the big resorts as well. So the only thing better than cheaper activities is free activity. So we were actually expecting to be doing nothing in Bora Bora. Like our idea of Bora Bora was just to sit down, relax, and look at the water. Now, if you guys have been watching our channel, then you know this is not our vibe at all. However, we were really surprised by all the activities and amenities that our resort had. We did so much, from lessons on a traditional outrigger boat, ukulele lessons, lay making, stand up paddle boards, snorkeling off our bungalow, opening a coconut, complimentary bikes, tennis courts, traditional fire dances, and so much more all included in our stay. But a lot of the waterfalls, the hiking, the beaches, you can do by yourself with a rental car. So thank you guys so much for checking out our channel. We truly appreciate the love and support that you guys give us. And hopefully this video could help make your trip to French Polynesia cheaper and more affordable. Or if you guys have other tips that we did not mention, please leave them down below. So please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one.